this is Jessica Lynn of JessicaLynnOriginal.com. We own a custom rubber stamp company as well as a full photopolymer line of stamps. So be sure to check out our website. Today we're going to go ahead and create a paper pieced card featuring our brand new Golden Retriever rubber stamp set. It's an easy card to make. It just is a little time consuming because there's a lot of pieces to it. The first thing I'm going to do is cut all of the three pieces that I have. And just so you know, they're the four by six pages. And what I want is, as you can see, I'm cutting them one inch wide each. So to do it easily, I just found the diagonal right off the corner. And then if you look on the far right hand side, I'm just lining it up so that it's a perfect one inch slice. Now, obviously, you know, you go through and you do something and you're like, oh, this is great. I've totally got it. What I would probably suggest doing, just to make sure that it's simplified, you can see I just made a pile of each one of these. Not a smart idea because then I didn't know how to go back to each one and make sure they were in the right order. I would probably number them as I pull them off, just with like a light pencil, just so that I could go through and you should be able to make three cards, although because I didn't number them, I probably could only make two because I didn't know which ones were the right one. And you'll see later, I have to go in and then accommodate for that. So let's go ahead and cut all three of the sheets. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna make a cardstock base and we'll do that in just a moment. I decided to build the card on black cardstock because the actual base of my card is white. So what I'm doing is taking off approximately a fourth of an inch and that'll be on both the width and the length side because I want just a hair around the outside of the card. So you can see I'm just double checking my measurements on my cardstock to make sure that I don't over or undercut. Let me just go ahead and slice that up. And you can see, so you get a nice little frame, little border all the way around. Really like that. I think it's going to make it pop. Um, from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start with my smallest. I'm just going to glue it up. And then I am going to start paper piecing one from my original set. And then I'm going to pick, see, and this is again where I probably should have numbered them so that I would have known which one was number two and which one was number three of each one. And so what I'm gonna do is just round robin through each of the different stockpiles of color. And again, you're just gonna to wanna to line it right up against the, oh, a little higher there, Jess, there we go. Right up against the edge of the other one because we want it to be flush, okay? Then I'm gonna go and pick the third one, which again, if I would have numbered this, would have been much easier and just make sure you line it up. And again, we're just gonna paper piece this and go one, two, three, one, two, three, glue them down until we have created a new base with these matching and coordinating papers. You can see after a while, I was not able to tell which one went where. So I ended up just grabbing ones that I knew would cover the entire card. And again, this is that whole, if I would have numbered, right? So now what I'm gonna have to do is actually cut it out and I just flipped it over and trimmed it so it was the size of the cardstock. So super easy. Now from here, you can see I'm just trimming up a little bit more just because it wasn't perfect, so I want it to be nice and crisp. 
especially because I'm going to be putting this on foam risers, I want to make sure it really pops. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get out the Jessica Lynn Original Golden Retrievers rubber stamp set. Now I am using some Copic paper. I picked this up because Copic paper is supposed to not bleed. So we will see how well the ink and the Copics go on there. And I'm, like I said, I'm going to be using our Jessica Lynn Original Golden Retriever rubber stamp set. And again, all of our stamps come professionally packaged. And you can see this set has a ton of sentiments. If you are thinking about using this stamp set or are interested in purchasing it, I will put the link down below. So let's go ahead and let's see which guy are we going to use. I think I'm going to use the one that's laying down just because he's really cute. I mean, they're all really cute. I'm kind of biased, right? Um, I really like him though. I think he'll fit perfectly because I do want to feature the paper piecing. But... I want something that will stand out. For this card, I am going to use my Close to My Heart ink. These ink pads, I'm going to tell you, I love the Close to My Heart ink pads. The only thing I think that's kind of a bummer is the way they flip open. I end up getting so much ink on my fingers, but I do like them. They're easy to re-ink, and I've had these for at least six or seven years. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp two of this adorable Golden Retriever. And we don't have die cuts, um, but the, I do have a brother scan and cut, so I'll be using that as my die cut, if you will. So I'll show you that in just a moment. I always stamp two, just in case that the first one I smear something or I go to color it. Now I have to leave enough space in between them so that my brother scan and cut can go ahead and put a border around them because I do like when it has just a really fine little white border. And then I am going to use my Copics and for the brownish color I used um, the 34. It's like a sand color. We use it all the time for Brentwood out. I'm going to zoom in nice and close so that you can see this. Now, first off, like I said, I'm using that 34, which is a sand color. Now, the only bummer is when I zoom in this close, you can see that I got out of the lines just a little bit. But The Copic paper, I'm actually pretty impressed with it. It does hold the color very well. And I did find that unlike when I use other cardstock, the Copic didn't bleed through the back side either, so it really held up very well. To go in and put some shadows in there, I love to use the Warm Family color of grays, so the W1 through 9 or 7. Well, let's see what I grab here. I think there's 7. Um, so those are my favorites, the warm ones. I think they just 
I don't know, for everything I color, I always want a warm gray, not a cold gray. So I'm just going to go in and add some shadows to him, just to make him just a little bit more dimensional. All right, now that he is all colored in, I'm gonna go ahead and get out my brother's skin and cut. I absolutely love this machine. The one thing I am not in love with is the boards that you have to send through, or like the little cutting mats. You're supposed to use the stickiness that's on those, and I've had nothing but boards that just are not sticky after using it once or twice. So I went and got some of that tape and it works like a charm. So I just kind of tape it on and make sure that it's really tight against the, the little cutting sheet because I want to make sure it's not going anywhere. And I'm going to go ahead and set up my brother's scan and cut. There you go. We're going to cut it, direct cut, and then we're going to go ahead and scan. Now when I scanned the first time, you're going to see because of the tape that I used, it actually picks it up in the lower corner and I wasn't paying attention and it wanted to cut the tape out. So I have a couple choices. See, see how there's that little bitty piece down below? I didn't like it. I was like, how do I fix it? I was not happy with it. I don't want it to cut the tape because it'll mess your blade up. It'll get it sticky. So you have to be really careful about that. So what I ended up doing was actually peeling that one corner that it kept picking up. And then I went in and did another scan. So you can see, see there's no tape down on that corner now. Now it's a little scary because I was afraid it was going to get snagged on the way back. But it luckily it stuck just enough that you can see it did not that time. So I'm super happy. I cropped in my cut very tight and I went ahead and look at that. See, now I am not going to cut the tape, so be very cautious. It's the only downfall to using the tape, especially if it's very close to your image. If your blade cuts around the tape, you could destroy your blade and then you need to buy a new one. Now they're not horribly expensive, but it's still it's a pain to, to have to do that. Now I did go ahead and cut out both the non-colored one and the colored one. Let me go ahead and show you. Let me take that out. Put my brother's scan cut away. Do, do, do. All right, so now it's been put away and I'm gonna just peel off all that tape. And the best part is the tape doesn't permanently stick. So I'm able to just take it right off. Not a big deal. It's not a great solution, but it definitely is one that works and is more cost effective. So now I'm going to go ahead and just take that top level. Now this is again that Copic paper. And look at how beautiful. It went ahead and found all those lines. And let me just show you this a little closer. You can see, look at how nice those edges. It's got a nice little edge all the way around it. I'm really happy with how this turned out. You know, it's just like having a die cut, but I didn't have to be spending the money on a die cut. Now, I'll tell you the Brother Scan and Cut is a little on the expensive side, but it is way worth the money in the long run. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and actually put the card together. So I went ahead and glued the back, and you can see I could have maybe put it on foam risers if I wanted, which could have added additional dimension. There was one little spark that stuck up, so I just used a glue stick, worked really well. 
But look at how fun that is. I love it. It's it's all coordinating papers because it's from the same pack. And it really makes that dog just pop. Now, when I first started, I thought, you know what? I'm going to put in a, you know, congratulations on your new family member. But that sentiment was just a little too long. So I realized after I stamped it, of course, that it wasn't going to work and I needed something just a little different. Plus I needed some more white to make the dog kind of stand out. Because if you look, he doesn't really stand out all that much. And I ended up adding a wider border around him. So I changed my mind and again I went with that wider border and then I put the eye paw print my golden retriever and again that sentiment is part of the Jessica Lynn original golden retrievers rubber stamp set which we do have on our website which again is just jessicalynnoriginal.com. So I went ahead and glued that about one and a half inch wide white strip and then I'm going to do my little cheater way of just cutting it off so that it's flush to both sides of the card. Now. If I had put that on foam risers, I could not have done what I did there with the white piece because it wouldn't have laid flat. With the dog, I'm going to go ahead and put some foam risers on him. Oh, you know what I heard this week too? Um, Bush's Baked Beans. I think it was their dog Duke. I think he passed away. Kind of looks like Duke a little bit. So I went and put him on there and what I like is that with that nice edge, it's, he's got some three-dimensional, he's got some um, shadows behind them. Again, I highly encourage you to sign your card because again, it's your piece of art and your craft. So here it is. Isn't it cute? Paper piecing, super easy. If you like what we're doing here, please go ahead and like and comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner that says Jessica Lynn Original. It, we really appreciate it. There's no cost and we do announce all of our new stamps, updates, cards, etc. here. So thank you again. Have a great day.